I'm like a family. This past weekend, uh, we laid eyes on something that's that was a little disturbing. And I think we need to talk about it. You may or may not know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then let's uh let's take a look at it. I'm your brother, brother Landon X, of course. But I got a question to ask. Oh, there's a faint from Jake. <laughs> Did our brother Nate Robinson embarrass himself? Did he embarrass us as black people? Or did our response to it basically cause us to embarrass ourselves? That's the question. We're going to get into it. Let's get it. family i'm your brother landon x and this is of course nation town tv and we're going to get into this nate robinson story it's been heavy on my mind i've been in deep thought i'm serious deep thought on this topic and we're going to touch on it real quick but first as always let's start in the proper fashion in the name of allah the beneficent the merciful i bear witness that there is no god but allah who mercifully appeared to us in the person of Master W. Far Muhammad, July 1930, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. And I wouldn't know nothing about him if it were not for his messenger. But when I say his messenger, with all due respect to Prophet Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, peace be upon him, I am speaking of none other than the messenger that was promised in the holy quran in surah 16 and 36 i'm speaking of none other than the most honorable elijah muhammad who was at minimum the messenger of allah and i would know nothing about either one of those beautiful and great men and accomplished men if it wasn't for the honorable minister louis farrakhan who we'll be hearing from uh in this particular segment that we're going to do and in those three great names i greet all of you in the words of peace we say it in the Arabic language. As-salamu alaykum. Shout out to everybody chiming in. I see you. I see you. Shout out to Brother Jerome Blakely. Uh, definitely hit that share button. Make sure you share this. Hit that like button. Hit the mad button. Whatever it is, however you feel, show the people that that's how you feel and get this message out here. 
Uh, of course, this is Nation Town TV Live, and it is always brought to you by NationTownStore.com. NationTownStore.com. Once again, huge shout out to everybody uh, that have been supporting NationTownStore.com. We really appreciate your support. I hope you're showing an equal and an equally consistent amount of support to all black owned businesses that you uh, come uh, about. And based on what I saw on social media, it looked like it looked like black folks kind of showed up and showed out when it came to supporting black businesses, especially online uh, this past so-called Black Friday. We, we really need to hijack that whole Black Friday term and turn it into something else, turn it into something where we exclusively deal with our own. But shout out to everybody that's been supporting NationTownStore.com. Uh, also brought to you by DoForSelf.net, DoForSelf.net. Online learning annex definitely hit it, hit that up for those that have been going there and following it. We will be updating the content very soon with some uh, new and very uh, exclusive and important information. Uh, but shout out to everybody! Make sure y'all hit us up, Nation Town Dollar Sign Nation Town on Cash App. Where is it at over there? Okay. Dollar sign Nation Town. Hit us up. Uh, all ten percent of your proceeds goes to our Yes Ma'am program. Yes Ma'am program. A meal and a message. This is where not only a meal but personal care products uh, from Eating Fresh and from NationTownStore.com are put together uh, for the those in need here in Los Angeles. Keep in mind that not only do we have our homeless population. But we also have something that I feel like should not exist, but it does. And that is the working poor. There are people out there who work, get up and work every day. But, you know, ends are just not meeting, especially in this day and age. So uh, we look out for those through the Yes Ma'am program. Uh, shout out to my wife, uh, Sister Shana Joy, who does a great job uh, with that and is looking forward to big things. And also we're going to do our... Uh, do for self city of the day. Uh, for those who don't know, we pick a city, uh, not so randomly. We try to tie it into what we're talking about, but we pick a city and then we find a random, uh, black owned business and support them right now. We do it free of charge. We're not paid by these particular companies. And as long as we do do for self city of the day, we're going to always uh, do it for free for a random black owned company but eventually, uh, for any additional advertisement, uh, you know, you're going to have to put. But in the meantime, uh, we have this just to highlight a particular city and a particular uh, black owned business. Now, today we're going to do something kind of different. We have three businesses, but we haven't we have three businesses for one very good reason. Now, the city that we're going to go to is the hometown of our brother, Nate Robinson, which is Seattle, Washington. And we're going to start with a restaurant called Lucinda Grain Bar. Lucinda Grain Bar. They also have a meal program. Uh, it was featured in Takeout Check-In uh, at Wardo Jordan's award-winning restaurants focused on community. You, it can be found on 2120 Northeast 65th Street, Seattle, Washington, 98115. And there's the phone number as well. Make sure you support them. But we also have... We also have June Baby. That's 2122 Northeast 65th Street, Seattle, Washington, 98115. Looks like it's next door. Not only that, we have Solare, 2404 Northeast 65th Street, Seattle, Washington, 98115. And the reason why I'm pointing out all three of these businesses instead of just one is because all three of them are owned and operated uh, by this young brother, Eduardo Jordan. Uh, he is the award-winning chef and restaurateur behind Solare, June Baby, and Lucinda Grain Bar. Shout out to our brother Eduardo for two reasons. One, it is amazing that he is operating not one, not two, but three black-owned businesses in a city that's it's got a decent black population, but not a you know a, a, 
a, a large black population, but also because he's the first black man that I've ever heard of named Eduardo. So shout out to our brother Eduardo. Uh, keep grinding, brother. Make sure if you're in the Seattle area visiting or if you live there, make sure you just, just fall in and tell them Nation Town sent you. So let, let, let's let's get down to business. I don't really want to be on long. I don't want, I don't ever want to be on long, people. I promise. I promise. But we're not going to be on long. I thought about doing one or two or three uh, uh, topics because I'm going to get straight to the point on the whole uh, Nate situation. But uh, I do want to uh, I do want to uh, point a couple of things out with this Nate situation. But shout out to everybody chiming in. Uh, DeAndre, Muhammad. Uh, shout out, uh, shout out to everybody chiming in again. Make sure y'all share this, make sure y'all get it out there. Share, 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 and share. Hit that like button, hit the hearts, hit the mad face, whatever you got going on in your life. But uh, hit us with your questions and comments, questions and comments, because I'm gonna hit the story real quick and we're gonna get out of here unless we got some questions and comments. And we'll make sure we look over those. But let's get down to business. I want to show you the full clip of the video of our brother Nate fighting this individual named Jake Paul. And we're going to get into the details. You know how Nation Town TV does. You know, like I said, we don't jump right on. We don't, we don't go straight live as soon as something happens. Uh, you know, that's, that's per the Holy Quran. That's per common sense. And that's just per the fact that usually when things pop up on your timeline or on your television for the first time, you're getting probably 15 percent of the truth or 15 percent of the information. There was another story that I thought about touching on. Uh, and I'll just tell you what story it was. I was going to touch on the story with the uh, speaking of black restaurateurs. It was the brother who basically shut down a situation where it was some sisters twerking in his restaurant. But I've been hearing conflicting reports about a couple of things, and that's an example as to why Nation Town TV, we don't try to be first on the scene. We don't try. We don't have that ambulance chaser mentality. Uh, we don't want to be. I, you know, I, I I I don't consider myself a bad looking person, but I don't want my big head in your face every every whim and every thought that that come across my mind. So we like to get, we like to let stuff cook for a minute before we get into it. But I think this Nate Robinson situation has cooked long enough and we're going to get right into it but i want to show you the full video it's not the full video but basically a lot of people don't even know if you didn't watch the fight he wasn't knocked down just once he was knocked down multiple times but i want you to watch it and then we're going to get into it oh there's a faint from jake oh calling calling oh robinson And there it was. And if you laughed when you saw that, I'm not mad at you. If you laughed at some of the 10,000 memes that were produced, seemed like in 10 minutes after the fight, I'm not necessarily mad at you. And with Snoop singing that old Negro church spiritual, <laughs> precious Lord, take my hand. How how could you not laugh? Shout out to Snoop. Snoop won that fight. Snoop was the real winner. Not that Pecklewood. Snoop was the real winner. I think he has a future in doing commentary. I want to hear him do, you know, professional fights, MMA, football, basketball. I'll I'll start watching football again if I know Snoop is covering it. He knows his football too. He's a he's really he's a legit sports fan. But if you laughed. We're going to talk about the, the laughing part, but here's the thing, because there actually is a story behind this. And again, like I mentioned in previous episodes, Nation Town TV, we have a diverse audience as far as, you know, walks of life and as far as ages and generations that, that, that follow and support us. And I know I'm not talking to a bunch of 25 year olds. So you may not be very clear on who either one of these individuals are. Uh, I got to be honest, I only heard of Nate Robinson going into this fight. In fact, when I first saw 
the poster for the entire card. That's what they call in boxing, the card. And when I saw Nate Robinson, I hadn't actually looked at Nate in a while. So the picture that I saw didn't really look like him. And the first thought came to my mind is the basketball player, the athlete. And I was like, nah, he ain't, he ain't boxing. But it turned out it really was. But there's a story behind this that we need to understand in order to learn from it. Because as you can see, the title <laughs> of this story is quite clear. What did you learn? Because it was a teachable moment. If it, you know, some of you found it funny. I found it funny in a certain in a certain sense, but it was really a teachable moment. Let's let's run down what, what really went down. Shout out to everybody uh, chiming in. But let's run down what it is. First of all, the guy he was fighting. Let's start with him. Uh, caveman named Jake Paul. Jake Paul is a YouTuber, which means he's a YouTube personality of sorts. I don't care where Nation Town goes or, or where it's been or where it's going. I will never consider myself a YouTuber or a influencer, even if that's happening regardless. Uh, but that's a thing now. You, you, there's a such thing as a YouTube. Some, and they get paid a lot of money just to be on YouTube. They talk about random stuff. You know, uh, I don't really know what his page is. I don't know what it's called. I wouldn't promote it even if I did. But he's a YouTuber, but apparently he's he's a trash talker. And he talks a lot of trash. And Nate Robinson, for some reason, decided to take him up on a challenge and be his second, not his first, his second professional fight opponent. Because this individual, Jake Paul, this is not his first go-round when it comes to fighting and, and fighting other people who are not fighters. In fact, the first fight he had, he also won. He actually won it quite quickly. He fought a YouTuber by the name of Anison Gibb. That's his, that's his actual YouTuber tag. That's not his, 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 his actual name. And what it means is Big Nose Nah spelled backwards. Anison Gibb. Don't ask questions. I, I don't understand. I don't know what that dude's page was about. But he was an Asian, I believe Asian. Uh, he's either Asian or Indian or Filipino, one of those. But he's also a YouTube, YouTuber. And somehow they got into it, you know, what they call a pissing match and decided, okay, let's take it to the ring. And they had an actual professional fight. This fight was considered a professional fight. And Jake Paul you know, apparently destroyed this dude, destroyed this guy. And he went on YouTube, obviously, after the fact, and, and bragged about it. He bragged about it a great deal. In fact, he bragged about it so much that it caught the attention of Nate Robinson. I guess the only way Nate Robinson would have known is by him being a follower, by him watching this guy's videos or Anise and Gibb, one or the other. But he watched these guys and he and he and he took a challenge. He he challenged him to a fight. Uh he accepted. They added it to the card of the Tyson. And uh shout out to Mike Tyson and, and, and one of my favorite fighters of my lifetime. Both of them are, but especially Roy Jones Jr. If you never saw Roy Jones Jr. fight in his prime, please do it. If that was your first time watching Roy Jones, and he did a good job for his age and his condition. But please go watch some real highlights of Roy Jones. And especially if you've been under the, under a rock and you've never seen Mike fight. But definitely go go YouTube and, 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 and find some Roy Jones fights. But anyway, they added that to the card. And for some reason, Nate took offense. Now, the main reason, I got to be honest, the main reason I'm even doing this, this, this subject, this segment, because here's how it went down, as it normally does. This is the worst time in the history <coughs> of creation <laughs> to get embarrassed in front of a lot of people. You know, 30 years ago, if you got embarrassed or something embarrassed hap embarrassing happened to you, you know, maybe 20, 30 people would see it. The people that were just in the immediate area. 
you know, if it wasn't an organized event, it wouldn't, it would never get televised or photographed. But nowadays, everybody have a whole studio in their pocket. They got it. They got a. They got a, a camera in their pocket. So when something bad happens to you, it can be on social media, literally within seconds or minutes. So this is the worst time to catch an L. And Nate caught one of those L's. So here's what happened. Immediately after that, <laughs> the internet went crazy. Now, me being a former rabid sports fan, I mean, I still care for it. I don't, you know, I'm not how I used to be. It used to be where I, you know, sports was sacred to me, especially football. But I just, I, I just personally, I'm not saying you need to or anybody else. I personally grew out of the need to watch the fight, to watch the game, to watch this and what. I just fell out of the, I used to feel like I needed to watch the game. I needed to watch the fight. And I just don't have that need no more. I'm not saying you can't watch it. I still will watch a random basketball game every now and then. I watch football highlights. You know, on Sundays, my mind is, you know, is on a, is somewhere else completely and, and literally and in, a, in the best fashion. So I don't really even check for the NFL no more, which is crazy if you know me. If you knew me, you know, you know before I joined the nation. But, you know, it's just not something that, that, I, that I just got to do. If I miss the game, oh, well. If I miss the fight, oh, well. And, 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 and man, I feel sorry for anybody that paid $50 uh, for this fight. But anyway, so that's the situation. He saw it. He decided he wanted to challenge him. But after he got knocked out, after he got embarrassed, social media exploded. It, ex it absolutely exploded with memes with jokes with people clowning them talking about night night nate nate and all of this kind of stuff but being that i used to be a, a major sports fan and also on social media or or internet blogs and and, and sports uh, uh message boards and whatnot that's how they do in every game when even if it's not something embarrassing but if somebody get dunked on if somebody lose or they lose multiple times or whatever. There are memes. Like there's a meme that I've seen a thousand times that they integrated into this Nate Robinson thing. That was the old Lion King with with the <laughs> with the with the with the baby, uh, what was his name? Uh with the little lion from Lion King, you know, like when Mustafa died and he's trying to push him and wake him back up. But you know, I, I've seen that before. I've seen that, you know, that image. After somebody got dunked on, after somebody got knocked out on the football field from a hard hit. I've seen all of this before. So if you're not really a sports fan, this really seems new to you. And it may also seem cruel. It may seem like they, you know, they really disrespecting Brother Nate. And, and, and you know, you know, you might have the need to overanalyze the situation and get super woke about the situation instead of it just being a sports thing. But that's what happened. So you saw a little bit of back and forth on social media from us, from black people. You know, some people call it black Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. I'm not going to be on there anytime soon. I don't really like the element. I talked to y'all about that before. But, you know, it's not just Twitter, but they call it black Twitter you know, because it's a community of black folks uh, that, that get it in and they make jokes and they go back and forth and they call themselves woke and all that kind of stuff. So so black Twitter really went in on both ends and I think they overanalyzed it on both ends. I think they went too far with the jokes. And those who were, you know, as we say in the streets, caping for, for Nate. Oh, calm down, leave him alone, don't laugh at him. You know, he it was a white boy, so you shouldn't laugh at all. Whoop de whoop, whoop de whoop. I think both sides kind of went overboard. So that's why we're doing this subject. So I did my own little research on the situation because I gotta be honest. I did not really know if there was a background. When I first realized it was Nate Robinson, and I realized that this was a YouTuber that he was about to fight. When I first came into understanding of that, my thing was like, okay, this is one of those corny, 
uh, exhibition celebrity type things where, you know, it, it, and it's really sad because in the past it would be like, I remember, uh, uh, what's, what's the goofy dude from Saved by the Bell? Uh, uh, he was fighting somebody and, and, and it got embarrassed, you know, but these are people who have fallen off from their, or their original careers and, and now they need a little bit of money or they just need the spotlight. So they're willing to do anything. You see the same thing, the same element on reality shows. So it's that kind of thing. And that's what I was thinking, but it turns out that's actually a little bit of a backstory. There's a backstory and I already gave the bakes, the basics of it. Nate saw this dude knock somebody else out and talk trash about it. Nate, for some reason, even though the dude, the white dude, to my knowledge, never, never pointed out. Nate, why would you even point out a random NBA player, you know, when you have nothing to do with the NBA? But he never uh, addressed Nate directly. But Nate took offense to it and said to himself, and I hope Nate is not struggling financially because I heard a rumor. I don't know it to be 100% true, but I heard that Nate Robinson made less than $1,000 for this fight. Maybe he got paid on the back end for pay-per-view sales. I don't know, but I just heard it was less than $1,000. I don't know that to be 100% true. So I hope Nate's not doing that bad after playing uh, many, many years in the NBA and making millions of dollars. So let's, so I did a little bit of research as we do on nation town. We don't just come with, with butt naked opinions. <laughs> we come with a little bit of research, a little bit of understanding. And I found out that not only because here's, here's was the thing. Those on black Twitter and black social media who were going overboard with the protection of Nate, and, and and saying we shouldn't laugh, we shouldn't joke about it, you know, making making it like this was the Dred Scott case or something like it was like it was MLK getting assassinated. I almost called it, I almost titled this video "The Passion of Nate Robinson" because we we almost exalted him to some Jesus figure who was crucified on the cross uh, by some Romans and Jews. It, it just it wasn't that serious, but. He was made out to be just this innocent brother who stumbled into a fight and, 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 you know, just didn't have a good day in the ring. But then I stumbled onto some actual facts. And the first thing I ran into was this video. I want you to pay very close attention. You called out Jake Paul a little bit. You said you're tired of these influencers like running their mouths. So what is going on? Why do you have beef with Jake Paul? And, and what no do you beef. want to do? That's a, that's a funny thing. There's really no beef. I'm just tired of people always calling out. You know, it's like a bully. You're just calling out people that you you know you can beat. So call out somebody that you know. I'm not going. I'm not going for the bullshit. So I'm with all the smoke. I mean, I'm a top tier athlete. You beat me will probably be the biggest accomplishment uh, for your boxing career. Or saying or a social media influencer or whatever. That's your biggest claim to fame right now is knocking out Nate Robinson. So come do it. I'm putting my everything on the line for you. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it done. It's, it's that simple. I saw a video of you. Your, your hands look like up to date. You look great. Um, and that's and that's me basic. That's basic. That's basic fundamentals, basic work. Yeah. So if I get and train with somebody like a Tyson, Mayweather, uh, uh, Crawford, Lomachenko, <laughs> if I fight and I train with some of the best of the best in the world, <laughs> like, please, I don't it, think. He said that was just the basics. That was just the basics. Oh, so if that's your first time seeing that video, this was several months ago that you just saw. Just judging by that, obviously, there's a there was a bit of an arrogance issue going on here. And we're going to talk about arrogance and how you can play yourself with arrogance. Not just your own, but what you perceive from other people. But he didn't sound humble at all. He sounded extremely overconfident. You know, the, the person hosting this, you know, said, oh, man, I seen you fight. I seen I seen you training. 
You know, you look good. Oh, yeah, that's just the basics. That ain't even... You know, and let's, and let's be honest. Boxing is not a stranger to confident athletes. Muhammad Ali, extremely confident. Mike Tyson, extremely confident. I, like I said, I want you to go back and watch some YouTube highlights of Roy Jones. Roy Jones was, I mean, Roy Jones would toy with his opponents. You know, he put his hands behind his back. He, he let his guard all the way down. You know, he'll do the old spinning and, and, and jab move. He, you know, he very confident, made a rap song, a hit rap song while he was knocking people out. I mean, boxing is probably the home of the most confident athletes. But the thing about it is that these are well-trained professionals that even if they lose the fight that they were so confident about, they usually put up a good fight because they're confident in their ability to box, not just their ability as an athlete, but their ability to box. There are great athletes out there in different sports, but you know, they would humble or should humble themselves if they're coming across an arena that they're not privy to and that they're not experienced in. You know, Serena Williams, a all-time great, one of the greatest to ever pick up a tennis racket. But if she got on the court with a WNBA superstar, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have any confidence in Serena. None. Or if she just got in got in the court with somebody with a little more experience than her. Keep in mind, Jake Paul was not a uh, a seasoned professional, but he was taking it serious. He took his first fight serious. He took this one very serious. And them blows proved that. But let's look into it. Let's see what we can learn. Let's learn from Brother Nate's mistakes. Now, I want to get into Nate as an athlete. Because like I said, I told you from the jump, I was familiar, very familiar with Nate as an athlete. Very familiar. In fact, Nate Robinson... If you would have asked me about Nate Robinson 72 hours ago before this fight, or even before I even knew about this fight, I would look you right in your eye. And I will still do this. I do it right now. I will look you right in your eye and tell you, Nate Robinson is one of the most gifted athletes I've ever seen in my lifetime. And I'm going to run it down real quick. First of all, the brother played for about eight NBA teams. He was a first round pick, a first round pick in the NBA in 2005. Now, what's really uh, impressive about that is that Nate is under six feet tall. He's under six feet tall. It's hard to even get a water boy position in the NBA under six feet tall. He was a first round pick, played for eight teams and played well. Nate Robinson was the kind of player. He was the kind of player that could drop 30, 40 points on any given night. He averaged about 10, 11 points. He scored about 7,000 points his entire NBA career. He played for eight teams. He also played overseas for a minute in the last couple of years of his career. But it was nothing to see Nate Robinson just go off one night and drop 30, 40 on somebody and just go crazy. It was nothing to see that. Nothing to see that. He was always full of energy. He always came off like a great teammate, you know, came off a little arrogant, but, you know, great teammate, played hard, very entertaining to watch. He won not one, not two, but three dunk contests, three dunk contests. In fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. For the rest of the, the night, he's got everybody on his side. Let's see what he's got. I believe this is the first one he won. One of the shortest players in the league. Okay. Then he, he did something really cool. Did something really amazing. For those that are real sports fans, you get this part. Pay attention. He's bringing out spud. That's a Spud Webb He's jersey. He's spud going over to none other than Spud Webb. Another great short. You know, you know I got love for the short brothers. 
Arguably, Spud Webb is the greatest short basketball player in the history of the league and also a great dunker and won a dunk contest himself. And he jumped over Spud Webb's head to win the contest. Amazing athlete. Amazing athlete. No, no question about it. And then on top of that, that's, that's, that's not even all. That's not even all. I really want to prove this point. But not only that, he played Division I college football. He played two sports in college. He went to the University of Washington, a Division uh, I college. They play, in, they play in the Pac-12 conference. He played both basketball and football. I believe he was a defensive back slash kick returner. Extremely talented brother. Extremely talented. There's no, there's no doubt about our brother's talent. Because I really wanted to, to, to push that in there of who he was and who he, who he is as an overall athlete. Now, let me, let me atone a little bit. Because I laughed. Now, I didn't laugh digitally too much. But I did call my brother out. You know, I made a post where I pointed out that Nate is the definition of being a jack of all trades and a master of none. Because I remember a couple of years ago, he was toying with the idea and was getting himself ready to take a shot at the NFL. Like I said, he played Division One college football. There's some players, there, there are great players that I know personally who were great in high school but could not you know, make it to a Division I school in any sport. He played two sports in Division I. That's amazing. But he took a shot or considered taking a shot. I don't know how far he went, but he took a shot at even playing in the NFL. And even then I was like, mm, okay, you played it in, in, in college. Just stick, just stick to basketball because each sport is a science. Go back and watch this year's 2020 Savior's Day where well, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talks about Kobe Bryant, and he breaks down how Kobe Bryant was a scientist in the way he played the game. There's a science to each one of these sports, and you got to devote yourself to that science to get the most out of yourself. Now, there are some brothers that are just so gifted. You put a basketball in their hand, you put a football in their hand, you put box boxing gloves on their hand, hell, you... Put them, give them a damn soccer ball and they'll do something with it because they're just so talented. But if you really want to be a professional, you take it seriously and you don't just jump in the ring. Floyd Mayweather, undefeated, Hall of Fame, legendary fighter, was very particular. And he's obviously somebody that he looked up to. And Floyd, Weather, Floyd Mayweather had somebody post something on social media in defense. And I said had somebody posted. If you don't know why, I say that he had somebody post something. Just look it up. I, I, I'm not going to embarrass my brother. But Floyd, we Floyd Mayweather, a uh, once-in-a-lifetime athlete, you know, he was criticized a lot in his boxing career for being very particular about who he fought. When you're the champ, you don't have to fight everybody. When you're on the top, you don't have to fight everybody. But he was very, very particular about it. But that's the way a fighter should be. You know, and if you're in a position where you're not trying to climb up the ranks, then you can pick and choose who you fight. And when you've already you've already been somewhat of a master in another sport where you made millions and solidified your name, you can never take Nate Robinson can get knocked out 20 more times. You can't take him out of the history books of the NBA of being a under a five foot nine first round pick, being a three time NBA champion. Being a player that can get out there and, and, and drop 40 points on you on any given time, score 7,000 points, they can never take that from him, ever. But when you just decide to just go into another sport based off of emotion and because you don't like somebody that you don't really even know, you're setting yourself up for something. But I found a little bit of humor because I'm going to tell you, man, getting knocked out is funny. Even when it's you, one of Cat Williams' funniest jokes was when he talked about how he got knocked out in a in a fight at the club. How he got knocked out and the club was was packed and he woke up the only one in the club and he woke up well rested after that fight. I mean, getting knocked out is funny because when you get knocked out, 
your body just, your brain and your body just turns hypocrite. It, your brain just turns on you. Your brain just walks away and says, you know what? I'm done with you for the moment. It's, it, 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 it can be a really embarrassing and, and, and comical thing. But I didn't, I didn't share, you know, the memes and all that kind of stuff. But I, I'd be lying. I'd be lying out of my big head if I didn't say that I laughed a little bit. Shout out to everybody chiming in. Brother Jerome uh, Blakely says Nate Robinson allowed his emotions to overrule judgment. He had no business in the ring. He took that sport for granted. He could have gotten killed. And that's real talk. There are people who have really lost their life in the ring. And the way he was fighting, he was running into punches. You don't run into a punch. You don't run into a punch. Make them punches run to you. Don't, don't run into a punch. So he, he's absolutely right. Make sure y'all share this message. Make sure, make sure y'all share it. Uh, brother Muslim says, wake us up, brother minister. I'm just your brother. But, uh, but yeah, it's a science. It's pugilism. You know, those familiar with boxing know that it's called that sweet science. It is a sweet science. I look at boxers. It's two sports that I just, that I don't consider my top favorite sports, but I got the utmost respect for them as sports. Because there's some sports I don't respect. I don't respect golf. I'm sorry. I'm not saying it's not a science, but I just don't respect it as a, any sport you can play with khakis on and a polo shirt. I'm sorry. It, it just, but two sports that just, that just amaze me when I see somebody just really good at it. Boxing and tennis. Boxing and tennis, those are two sports that really take a particular skill set and talent and training that you cannot play with. You can't mess around with. But when somebody falls under any circumstance, we got to be careful. I admit we got to be careful how we react. So I want you to listen to this. Some of, some of y'all may have heard this before, but I, I, you know, you're going to hear it again anyway. This is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talking about this kind of situation. And I want you to pay very close attention when you hear him, whenever you hear him, wherever you hear him, listen to him. Like the messenger said, listen to this, to this beautiful man, teach on this, on a very similar subject. You see men fall, don't laugh. Learn, learn because you're on your way up. And the things that tempt people to fall, you and I are not free from that temptation, nor from the weakness that will cause us to stumble and fall. When you laugh at somebody else's fall, white or black, rich or poor, your enemy or your friend, you are laughing and opening a way for your own demise when you do that. Because to laugh and not learn, to make mockery and not to understand is to make the same mistake yourself. Did you hear me? There it is. When a man falls, don't laugh. But pay attention to what he said. He said, don't just laugh, learn. He said, if you just laugh and make mockery, but not learn. See, now you're in trouble. And the first thing I posted about this situation on social media, I said, let's learn from Nate Robinson. We got to learn. Even if you protecting him or defending him or even if you clowning him, what I saw over the weekend was a bunch of uh, people protecting him and defending him and a bunch of people clowning him. I didn't see a whole lot of people learning from him. And I, see, I saw people defending him and protecting him and i've seen those some of these same people clown and, and make mockery of other people and notice how the minister said regardless of their race regardless of their race if you see them fall learn from it the most honorable elijah muhammad wrote a groundbreaking book called the fall of america but we have instructions in the nation of islam to not be on social media or even out in the streets of real life, just making mockery of this falling superpower. Learn from it. Be prepared to take their spot. Or you run the risk of being the next one on the summer jam screen, as they say in hip hop. <laughs> if you don't know what that means, look it up. 
So he said, don't just laugh. Make sure you learn from it. So I want us to learn. And we're going to go over a few major points that we need to learn from. Because here's what I saw. I saw just overreaction, overanalyzing. And, and this is what we look like when we overreacting and overanalyzing something. When it's just not that serious. It's just not that serious where we where we it's just a little simple situation and then it gets knocked out of the it's just you know we look so crazy sw over swinging on something that was so small and so petty but we did so let's learn from y'all all right let's 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 look into it shout out to everybody chiming in let's learn from it real quick let's go over a few things that we should learn from our brother uh, I did see an update, just in case you, you're you concerned with our brother. Uh, <laughs> our brother's doing fine. He says he, he wasn't seriously hurt. When anybody go down like that and they run into punches like that, like the brother said, like brother uh, Muslim said, I mean, you can really get hurt. I mean, think about it. If you can die from blunt force trauma in a car accident, it can happen in a ring, too. If your neck just snaps the wrong way, too fast, in the wrong angle, in the wrong direction, you could be paralyzed. This is not just something you see on the movies. What happened to Apollo Creed wasn't just in the movies. It really happens. So, But our brother is okay for those that are sincerely worried about our brother. Make sure y'all hit us up. Dollar Sign Nation Town on Cash App. Uh, show us some love. And again, shout out to everybody who, who did their thing for black owned businesses this past weekend. But let's go over some things. Let's go over some things. Let's go over some facts and we're going to get up out of here. First of all, this is what happened. Nate and and I want you to not don't, you know, don't 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 uh <laughs> don't single out this situation. I want you to look at this in the broad spectrum. It's ain't, this ain't just about, this ain't even, this ain't about Nate Robinson. It ain't a damn show ain't about that, that cavey, Jake Paul, whatever his name is. This is about just learning from a man falling, whether they fall literally or get knocked out or whatever the case may be. He saw someone on social media that he disagreed with. This was the inciting incident. Now, how often does that happen? When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you just were perusing through your timeline and you just saw someone post something and you disagree with it? And for some reason, it hit a nerve. It, it, it awakened. Uh, it it re-stimulated you in some kind of way. Or you already had feelings about that person and then they posted something that you felt some kind of way about. And then all of a sudden, you became unhinged. You ended up posting something in response that probably wasn't the best thing to do. And it probably misrepresented what you say you are. It happens all the time. Do you know that a lot of the violence that's going on in our streets these days, a lot of it is, is instigated and perpetuated on social media. A lot of these rappers that are coming, these, like I said, on the, on the episode where we talked about a lost generation, a lot of these rap murders are just the tip of the iceberg of many other murders on a lower level. That's why a lot of these rappers that, that you hear about, it was another one that was murdered in New Jersey this past weekend. They caught it all on film. You know, they just uh, uh, ambushed the, the poor brother. May Allah be pleased. But these are tips of the iceberg compared to several other, you know, no name situations. But that's why a lot of these rappers that you're hearing about getting killed, you never heard of them before it happened. That's because you're looking at the culmination or the climax of a back and forth that's not only going through the streets, but being perpetuated through fans and people who are just onlookers, a bunch of little corny, goofy fans somewhere in the suburbs drum, drumming up and instigating drama between these two rappers that are just trying to find a way to feed their family legally. But their emotions, the, the amount of estrogen in the black man today figuratively and literally is out of hand. So emotions get out of control real quick. So that's the first thing. He saw someone that he disagreed with. That's bound to happen. 
Facebook, before you even type something, it says what's on your mind. So if everybody is posting what's on their mind, fools are posting what's on their mind, scholars are posting what's on their mind, liars are posting what's on their mind, idiots are posting what's on their mind, rapists, child molesters, Republicans, Democrats, sellouts, coons, revolutionaries, everybody's posting what's on their mind, you bound to run into a lot of stuff that you don't agree with. So that was the first shoe to drop. That was the first shoe to drop. Then, here's, here's, here's a major point that we cannot overlook. This person, speaking of the, the Caucasian, the caveman, this person never addressed Nate Robinson directly before, before this so-called challenge. But Nate disliked this person so much that he allowed his emotions to drag him into a disagreement, which really wasn't even a disagreement. Disagreement about what? But a disagreement that made him an aggressor and pulled him, Nate, out of his element. That's a no-no. Whether you follow in the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad or Sun Tzu's Art of War. You never let somebody, especially somebody you claim to not like or you don't agree with, you never let them pull you out of your element. They already won. Before the, before the battle even starts, they already won when they pull you out of your element. And then you let them pull you when they didn't even address you. That shows how somebody can just garner up feelings about somebody. Via, via satellite, just via Wi-Fi from, from a distance. You don't even know this person. I see a lot of that, and that's really not a good look, and it's definitely not a good look in the black man and the black woman. But we do that a lot. We do that a lot, and I'm going to get into that. I'm going to get into that. So that's number two. Number three, but let me say something about this, the last part right there. Look at that last part. He dragged him into a disagreement that made him an aggressor and pulled him out of his element. And that's the reason why in the Holy Quran, Bismillah rahman rahim it makes it clear. Holy Quran, Surah 2, 190. And fight in the way of Allah. If you're going to fight, make sure you're fighting in the way of Allah, meaning you're fighting for something that Allah would fight for. Not over some YouTube video. You fighting over something real. But fighting the way of Allah against those who fight against you. But be not aggressive. Surely Allah loves not the aggressor. From what I understand of the situation, this Peckerwood, who is usually the aggressor, was not the aggressor in this situation. I have not found anything. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm not a YouTube aficionado when it comes to watching every little YouTube channel. I, I, you got me on that. But from what I saw, I didn't see where, uh, and it wouldn't even make sense. You're going to just randomly diss some retired basketball player who's not even an internet personality. What it was is that Nate was a fan. He was watching. He was following. I see this as well on social media. You see it, you know, in the so-called conscious realm of social media. Where some clown gets out there being a clown because that's what he is or she is. And they might say something that might disrespect a certain school of thought, a certain organization. And then all of a sudden, you know, people get, get caught up in it. And, oh, oh man, we got we to gotta say something to this dude. Who is this? Oh, we, man, don't let us catch him in the streets. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You see it all the time. They just throw something out there and then we just lose our mind. We get all unraveled. We get all unhinged over just some random clown. And then they pull us into their element. And if we have a following or, 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 or people that respect us and follow us wherever we go in reality or on social media, we take that following right into that den, that snake pit with us. So if this person is just trying to get followers, which, of course, that's the that's the name of the game and being a YouTuber. 
If that's the name of the game, then they win just by you paying attention to the foolishness that they're talking about. That's how the game works. Some of us play that game. Some of us don't. I don't play that game. If I got a problem with somebody, I don't even say their name because I'm not going to give them that glory. I'm going to deal with the falsehood that they're talking about. So be not the aggressor. This is why everything that's in the Abrahamic religions, get past the spookism, get past the, the lies that the enemy didn't put around and in between religion and around religion. Because he didn't, he didn't put lies around all of the Abrahamic religions. Get past all that. The teachings of the Abrahamic religions are all logical if you pay close attention. And they will keep you from making a fool out of your damn self. If, you, if you're wise. If you just pay attention. You ain't got to be wise. You'd be a damn fool. But if you just pay attention to people that are wise on that topic. Number three. Arrogance then kicked in because Nate assumed that his knowledge and ability regarding his profession, which in this case was athletics, automatically made him better. Let me read that again. Arrogance then kicked in because Nate assumed that his knowledge and ability regarding his profession, which in this case was athletics, automatically made him better. Now, we're talking about Nate Robinson, but then again, we're not. I see this happen all the time on social media. Oh, I, I know, I, I know all this trivia about a certain religion or a certain teaching or a certain science. All this trivia. Trivia. Why am I using that word trivia? See, trivia is useless information. Or information that's not being used. You can take useful information and turn it into useless information by not actually using it. That's why. Let me make a public service announcement to all those watching. I'm not impressed with anybody that knows the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with anybody who understands the teachings of the Hebrew Israelites. I'm not impressed with anybody who knows the teachings of Christianity and Christ. I'm not impressed with anybody that knows chemistry. I'm not impressed with anybody that understands plastic. I'm not impressed with anybody that understands this and knows the, the, the details of that and the details of this or the price of eggs in China and all this. Food. I don't care. But if I see you making good use of it in your personal life, see, now I got to clap. Now I, I, I got to dap you up. Now I got to follow you. I got to at least follow your YouTube page. I ain't going to follow you, follow you, but I at least got to respect you because you've taken what you know and you've manifested it into something, into something that's real. But we got people who think, oh, I know this. I know that now to Brother Nate's defense. I mean, he's he manifested his athleticism. Like I said, he, he played two Division I sports, two. And don't think that just because you got recruited for one sport, they just going to let you play another sport. In fact, they, they, they really caution against it because they spending money by giving you a scholarship to play one sport. And then you choose to play another sport that's also very dangerous, like football. I know a brother who had that opportunity and he got talked out of it. They said, listen, man, man you, you here for basketball. You mess around, blow out your knee playing football, then you can lose your scholarship and be home. And, and, and we got to let you go. So for him to be able to play both sports, that's amazing. So he has manifested it. He has. That's something to consider. However, you can become so arrogant in what you think you know. And, and here's, here's something else I got to point out. Because here's the, here's the tricky thing about arrogance. Shout out to everybody chiming in. Hit us up with your questions and comments. We're about to get up out of here. But here's the tricky thing about arrogance. Sometimes we misinterpret arrogance. We see somebody who's just good at what they do. They're good at what they're doing. And if they're not walking around like an old slave, you know how slave slaves, they scratch when they don't itch, laugh when they nothing funny. They always inferior around the white man. Don't look him in the eye. And we have this mentality sometimes, especially black folks and even white folks, because it's actually a white man's mentality. The way he looks at us. White men hate to see a confident black man. Hates it. 
So we have this mentality where we see somebody that's good at something and they're not constantly apologizing for it. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know how I, how I solve that equation. I just, my, my little Negro mind, I, I just get it. Uh, I don't know how I scored that touchdown. I don't know how I dunked that basketball. <laughs> Silly me. If he ain't walking around just constantly apologizing for his greatness, you're going to find somebody that say, that nigga think he all that. Guarantee. And then here's the tricky thing that happens. Now that you done drummed up some false arrogance in that brother or sister, now you're making yourself the arrogant person because now you're the aggressor. That brother or sister probably never said nothing to you or even know you. And a couple of times they probably crossed paths with you. They probably showed you nothing but love. But because you, you got a disease in your heart and you you really mad at God because they good at something or better at something than you are. You start feeling a certain way about it and then you want to superimpose arrogance on them. But what you're really doing is putting it on yourself. And that's what happened with our brother Nate. Now, I get it. Sometimes I look at, at I can't stand looking at cocky, cocky cavemen. I can't stand a cocky cave. I can't stand the overconfident cave. But I step back and I watch. I, I get ready for their downfall because it's coming. Even for white men, it's coming. Look at your president. It's coming. It always comes. It always comes. What does the scripture say? Pride cometh before the fall, before the destruction. It's, it's going to come. Be, be patient. But you ain't got to do something silly that then makes you the fool in the process. Now, the last thing. And we're going to get up out of here. It's the last point. <laughs> and a little bit of levity. Nate, he woke up on the 29th well rested in a mug. Just like, just like Cat Williams said. He woke up well rested. But here's the bottom line. It was just a corny boxing exhibition. Like I said, it was not the Dred Scott case. It wasn't the Dred Scott. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a referendum on black unity or black pride or black. It was none of that. You got people making fun of Nate Robinson. Oh, oh, he embarrassed every black person. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, 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 if you, if you, if you make fun of, or if you, you say something about Nate Robinson, you a coon, you ain't really, that ain't black unity. Stop it. And then secondly, what Nate did is what we black people do on a daily basis. We allow the enemy's foolishness to distract us or coax us into looking like the fool when in fact it was the devil himself that was the fool but he plays his foolish game so well that we end up looking like the fool page 100 a message to the black man the most honorable elijah muhammad said it so well and what's amazing about it is that he said that it hurts a lot to his heart let me let me actually uh, let me let me read it real quick. If y'all got y'all message to the black man, y'all can read it along with me. Most honorable Elijah Muhammad says on the first paragraph of page one hundred, the devils fool and disgrace you, Almighty Allah God, and the nation of Islam elsewhere, Asia and Africa, the islands are grieved and hurt to the heart to see you walking into the trap your enemies, the devils, have and still are setting for you. That's a message to the black man. So that's letting you know right there that there are snares and traps that this devil sets up. Don't you realize that sometimes when you get pulled out of your element, that's the victory for the enemy. I feel like Jake Paul, whatever his name was, he won that fight before the fight. Because he got you to get into the ring with him. You look like a fool off top. Being so moving, and, 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 you know, and you couldn't even say, well, I got paid $2 million for it. Roy got paid. Mike got paid. The undercard always gets shortchanged. Always. And plus it was an exhibition. So it's like. You didn't get money off of it. You, you, you It was an embarrassing outcome. But you really lost before it even started. And it reminds me 
of one of my favorite quotes from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He said in a lecture a couple of years ago, never let your enemy choose the theater of your warfare. I'm going to read that again. Never let your enemy choose the theater of your warfare. Don't forget the first person that Jake Paul fought was Aboriginal. I believe he was Asian, Asian, which is one of the Aboriginal people of this earth. So this Peckerwood was able to embarrass not one but two Aboriginal people with his arrogance, with his with his with his taunting and all of that. And then the last one that he that he embarrassed, he didn't even taunt him directly until after the challenge was put out there. Like I said, you never know what somebody's definition of victory is. Some of us win the physical fight and then lose the war. We lose, we lose the physical battle. Somebody say something to us we don't like. Oh, I ain't going to take that. And you knock him out. Or you knock her out. A lot of brothers get caught up letting a female get up under their skin. Because a lot of females in certain situations, sometimes the female is the physically stronger one. But a lot of situations, the sister, the female is not the strongest and she knows it. So she's like, well, I'm going to say something that, that's going to make this person so mad that they're going to knock me out and they're going to spend at least spend the weekend in prison or in jail or spend several years in prison. That little black eye is going to heal up soon while you still in jail, somebody's boyfriend. So you never know what somebody's definition of victory is, especially this enemy. He got many definitions of victory. He'll even put money in your pocket and have you thinking you won, but actually it's him that's the victor. So be careful. Never let your enemy choose the theater of your warfare. For those who are not familiar with that terminology, theater of war. Theater deals with warfare. It ain't talking about the movie theater where you went to see X-Men 19 or Avengers 13, whatever the hell. It's talking about the theater of warfare. And warfare theater or theater is an area in which important military events occur or are progressing. A theater can include the entirety of the airspace, land, and sea area that is or that may potentially become involved in war operations. So family, it's as simple as that. Sister, shout out to Sister Sherry Land Drow says, never let your enemy choose the playground of your, you can say playground too. All praises due to Allah. Yeah, I heard that he only got $600 for $600. And then he hyped it up. He did a great job of hyping it up. He said, I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for all the NBA. I'm doing it for Michael Jordan. I'm doing it for LeBron. I'm doing it for this. You know, people tried to get mad at LeBron for, for laughing about it. <laughs> you know, never let your enemy choose the theater. You are a world-class athlete with a particular concentration. Every major... <laughs> Every major in college, they, you know, they have a concentration. They have a particular subject that they're majoring in. Brother Nate, yours is basketball with football being a close second. Challenge him to a one-on-one. -on -one. Play horse. You know, play horse. Play football. Make him, cut, make him stick you and then you stick him. Play, do the Oklahoma drill. For those who play football, you know what the Oklahoma drill is. That, that was always a quick way to get, get two brothers who got an issue with each other to, to iron out those issues. In fact, they need to just start making black men and, and everybody, but especially black men who got a problem with each other instead of shooting each other, we just need to lace them up and, and do the Oklahoma drill real quick. We're going to find out who the real G is after that Oklahoma drill is done. So, you know, bring him into your arena. Bring him into your arena. But never let your enemy choose the theater of your warfare, literally or figuratively. And with that said, I thank y'all for listening. I'm going to leave you as I greeted you in the words of peace. Aisalamu alaikum.